Good morning, I'm Lorenzo Bergonzi and this is the presentation of my thesis. All the work described is done with Midas NFX and it concerns about the structural verification of composite space frame of University of Parma Formula Sai car. The Formula Sai is a competition promoted by the Sai and involves a lot of universities in the world. The various teams are virtually hired to build a race car prototype. The competition does not consider the only the dynamic part of the race, but also the part of project cost and design. As you can see, it consists in various international events. Here in Parma, since 2007, we have the UniPR Racing Team to represent our university in this type of competition. The frame verification is necessary because of a new rule that requests the verification of glued structural joints which connect carbon tubes. So we started initially with the structural verification of carbon tubes. After, when we see that the global structure could be considered as safe, we concentrated our attention on the primary request of the rule, the verification of joints. As you can see, those joints have a different spatial conformation, but the part that is inserted and glued to the carbon tubes is common to all the types of nodes. This allowed us to recreate a single representative model of the glued junction. At the end, we simulated the tonsillar stiffness of the entire frame as index of, of efficiency of our building solution. As we say, our work was made with Midas and FX, and this is the first thesis in Italy entirely done with this software that is now the, a new technical sponsor for this year. We started creating the complexive frame model, starting from a CAD file containing all the tubes axes. It's a very detailed model, so we have considered also the axes of screws and pins in the suspension articulation and exporting it in NFX. Here, thanks to the particular lamination of our tubes that is symmetric and in plane isotropic, we created a prevalently beam mesh. For two elements like massive 3D elements or 2D plates, we use respectively 3D elements and shell with material properties. In the image above, you can see one of the suspension connections fixed to the frame with RBE. We also released constrained degree of rotation in correspondence of suspension articulation in order to recreate the correct kinematic chain. In the end, we had two concentrated masses, one in correspondence of driver's seat and the other in the back, representing the engine. We created also a detailed joint model to investigate the various phenomena in the adhesive layer. First of all, we recreated the Bosch with 3D elements with aluminium properties. The glue was meshed as follows. We have two concentric cylinders of 3D elements, with each with a thickness of 0.15 mm. The specific dimensions were necessary to put us in the same condition of experimental tests that allow us to know the maximum shear and peel stress in the adhesive. We adopted the maximum local stress criterion. We found the maximum level of stress, peel and shear on the middle cylinder of glue. So you can understand why we adopt two cylinders instead of only one. Naturally, we have to orient the material, assigning a common peel and shear the action alongside the gluing. When we have the results, we compile the level of stresses obtained by FEM simulation with the security areas determined during experimental surveys that represent a level of internal stress that could be considered as safe for this junction. We also assigned a size control in the parallel direction of the axis of tube. We have a stress concentration near the borders of the glue, so it's necessary a more coarse mesh. The contact between glue and bush is a welded type 
with the particular attention to the coincidence to the nodes of the two different materials. This was done to recreate a correct transmission of loads. It's important to underline that the entire glue mesh was created entirely in NFX with only the edges as geometrical references. This was necessary to assign the orientation to the material and to have the correct element dimensions in various parts of the junction. The carbon tube, this time, was simulated using a shell in correspondence of the middle cylinder of the section. As you can see from the figure, we have recreated the composite corrosive taking sequence and thickness of the laminate. The contact created is another welder type contact. This time we had to specify to the, to the software the existing distance between tube, shell and aluminum surface. In absence of service loads, we stated to use those described in the Formula Sci 2013 alternative frame rules in order to verify the frame. We assumed that the elements constituting the car were fitting the rules requirements and we concentrated our attention only in the verification of carbon tube and glued joints. We stop. The rules require also the fatigue test of joints. In absence of real dynamic loads, we simulated three cases that could happen during Formula Sci race. The first is the jump on an amp with the anterior real wheel. We locked three of four wheels, leaving the one that jumped free. After, we applied a three times gravity acceleration to the wall model, simulating in another case, we imagine the car covering a curve with no radius and velocity. We also admit the starting of overturning. They applied the lateral acceleration, it's a simple formula, known the radius and the velocity, to the entire model, considering as we have done in all other cases, also the weight of the structure. We locked the external wheels in the curve, leaving the internals free, simulating the detachment from the track. The last case represents the brake with all the four wheels locked, in the length of 4 meters and starting with a velocity of 40 km per hour. We found the deceleration applied to the entire model as usually. Here, we can see the deformed frames and the simplified boundaries applied on the wheel hubs. Now we can see the first verification test, the analysis of carbon tube. Starting from the worst combination of principal stresses, normal, shear, bending and torque moment, applied all on a single tube, we transformed these loads in stress per unit thickness, in order to verify them in two representative combination of stresses in point A and B in the figure. Using a commercial software, we can see how in all cases, for all criteria, the safety factor is significantly higher than one, so the tube is safe. After, we have the static verification of joints. Starting from static load applied on the entire frame, we consider the principal stresses only in correspondence of joints. We had concentrated the worst combination of loads on a single joint and applied these loads via RBE to the carbon tube. These loads causes an increasing of stress in the adhesive. But we can see from this graph that however the level of peel and shear stress is internal to the safe area, so we consider the joint verified. We have done the same thing with the verification of joints. Starting from the three load cases that we have created, we consider the principal stresses only in correspondence of joints, considering the worst load combination applied on one single load. To evaluate the safety area in this case, we started from Wohler diagrams obtained from experimental surveys in correspondence of the infinite life of the joint. As you can see, all three cases are internal to the safe area, so we can consider the joint verified also with fatigue loads. This is a simulation of torsion and stiffness of the frame. We locked the real wheels and we have adopted two different methods. 
The first is to apply a couple of forces to the anterior wheel hubs. The other is a torque moment applied directly to the frame. With a simple formula, we found two stiffness constants that are dramatically different. This is due to the different method. In this way, we can understand the stiffness and the influence of the suspension kinematic in the evaluation of global stiffness. Also, it's clear that when someone declared the torsional stiffness of a frame, I have also to specify the, the method for evaluating the stiffness constant because, as we have seen, it is in, influenced by a lot of different factors. Here you can see the rotational deformation alongside all the frame. At the end, we consider different types of construction for our frame. We consider the same tube diameter but different material, such as steel and aluminium, that are commonly used in Formula SI and also the frame done with tubes in steel, characterized by having the minimum allowable di diameter. As you can see, we have a torsional stiffness higher in the case of steel tube with the 35.2 mm diameter, that is the same of our carbon tubes. But if we relate the torsional stiffness with weight, because for a car of this type the torsional stiffness is important, but also the weight has a fundamental role in performances, we see that our car has the best ratio and also the, the torsional stiffness is in line with other cars of this competition. So that's all, thank you for our attention and have a nice day.